time. Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Wednesday, June the 28th. Well, the big news in Arkansas happened about 4.45 a.m. this morning. A 32-year-old man from Van Buren named Michael Reed drove his uh, Dodge Dart into the less than 24 hours old Ten Commandments monument that was erected yesterday on the state capitol grounds, knocked it over and broke it into pieces. This same man had done the same thing in Oklahoma to a similar monument on the capitol grounds there three years ago. He was uh, confined in a hospital at that time, was released last year, I think it was, on the condition that he continue his medication, continue receiving treatment for, for a mental illness, apparently got off his medication. He videotaped his drive into the monument. He was arrested on the scene. He's facing a, a series of charges for trespass and, and criminal mischief. Interesting things have developed on his Facebook page. In addition to his live video of the event, he talks a great deal about his beliefs. He's a Christian, a, a devout believer in Jesus and in God, a born-again Christian, talks at great length about religion, has some posts about his politics. He would seem to have been a Donald Trump voter. He's not exactly from the end of the political spectrum that Jason Rapert, the sponsor of the monument, perhaps would have expected. He's actually just a person who, who, has, a, who has a disturbed personality, and I think that's the long and short of this story. It didn't stop Jason Rapert, however, from invoking the specter of ISIS, no less, when he talked about this with one right-wing radio news commentator today. And uh, he, he blamed the whole incident on the ACLU, the line, local media, and free thinkers at a news conference this afternoon. They're going to rebuild the monument, of course, and then again, when it is rebuilt, it will again be challenged as unconstitutional by the ACLU. Just, by the way, as the Oklahoma monument that was broken and then reestablished established over there was found to be unconstitutional by court in that state. It's funny that Jason Rapert should talk about rhetoric and how, how other people besides him have inflamed this situation today. He actually at a news conference today said that knocking down a piece of granite statuary looks somewhat like a cemetery headstone, although three tons in size, is equivalent to the man with a semi-automatic rifle who shot a congressman and other people in Washington. That's rhetoric that perhaps is a bridge too far. Well, on to, on to, other, on to other topics. Uh, for one thing, the Arkansas Attorney General's office late yesterday finally wrote a letter to the Supreme Court saying they were interested in other people's ideas on how to put into effect the U.S. Supreme Court ruling that the state of Arkansas can no longer discriminate against same-sex couples in issuing birth certificates. Both parents should be listed on the birth certificate. The state is still discriminating against people who are seeking to get such birth certificates. How quick will this be resolved? I don't know, but at least the Attorney General wrote a letter. The question is, can the Supreme Court be bothered to take a break from its summer vacation to do anything about this, or will people continue to have to wait many more months for equal justice under the law in Arkansas? Well, have to see. <clears throat> the Metroplan Advisory Council today, that's a council of local governments, voted overwhelmingly in favor of the concrete ditch project through Little Rock to widen Interstate 30 to 8, 10, who knows how many lanes to move traffic faster out to the suburbs to the detriment of the city. Mayor Mark Stodel was among those who said this was a good idea. Once more going with the Chamber of Commerce and against the overwhelming opposition of people who wrote in about this project and said there was a better, more city-friendly way to do it. At the Plasky Quorum Court meeting last night, five Republicans got together enough votes to stop uh, a small contribution by local governments here and in Saline and Garland counties to uh, <clears throat> match some federal money that would begin the planning process for a 65-mile biking and hiking trail from Little Rock to Hot Springs. It would be a massive benefit to public health. It would provide some alternative transportation within the cities along the route. It would be a tremendous tourism lure as the three uh, Rivers Bridge and the Big Dam Bridge and the Junction Bridge is proved. They say money should be spent on traditional infrastructure. That's the problem. It's a lack of vision and it's short-sighted. Walking and bikes and trains and buses are not alternative transportation and some kind some kind of fripperies, some kind of little extras. Their needs too, just as much as a, excuse excuse me, just as much as a bridge or an arterial street or a freeway is. Until we think about things differently, we won't progress as some other cities have. Wish the Quorum Court could go to Copenhagen sometime and see how many people ride bikes there. It's 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 an amazing sight. Uh, there was a shooting last night. A woman at, on Interstate 30, about 7 o'clock, her car was shot up. She was wounded, not so badly. She couldn't drive herself to hospital. Still looking into what happened on, on that case. 
Attorney General Leslie Rutledge and Governor Asa Hutchinson both cheered news that the former Oklahoma Attorney General, now EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt, is rolling back yet another protection of the environment, this one the water of the U.S. rules. It's bad for business to control the quality of water that feeds into drinking water supplies, and Leslie Rutledge and Asa Hutchinson are really happy that the government's going to no longer take extra steps to protect the quality and safety of that water. A piece of good news, we need some, nothing better than a baby animal for some good news. Little Rock Zoo announced today that it's uh, dikers, which is an African antelope, a shy sort of creature. Their effort to bring a couple here for breeding a year or so ago has paid off. There's a new baby diker out at the zoo. You can take a look if it's willing to show its face. And finally, some demonstrators uh, got outside Senator Tom Cotton's Washington office today, several of them in wheelchairs, and asked Senator Cotton to block that bill, to not vote for that health care bill. Well, their reward for uh, protesting and making a little noise was to be hauled off by the Capitol Police. But they're resisting. I am too. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.